<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Um, you know, just to flip to the, the other end of the spectrum in terms of what, like, co-evolution between two different species could be like, over the last 20,000 years, look at what we've done. We've taken wolves and we've turned them into these creatures we put Halloween costumes on. Right. And, like, a finding a couple of years ago, which, like, floored me, this hormone oxytocin, which is totally trendy. Oxytocin is completely cool. Mother-infant bonding is mediated by oxytocin, pair bonding in monogamous species. Oxytocin makes you more trusting and expressive and generous and... In economic games, and oxytocin has all these pro-social effects within a species. But then it turns out that this hormone that has spent the last, I don't know, 100 million years having mothers and infants connect to each other emotionally, um, when you and your <coughs> beloved dog sit there and stare into each other's eyes, you both secrete oxytocin. And if you pump up oxytocin levels in your dog, it will stare at you longer, and you will stare longer back and secrete more <laughs> oxytocin. This is like an ancient, ancient hormone having to do with mother-infant bonding. And in 20,000 years, which is like a blink of an eye evolutionarily, suddenly we're doing this weird oxytocin tango thing with another species. Another species who we feed and take care of, and they, like manipulate us wildly into like getting them like good like dessert treat bones and stuff like that and they in turn do all sorts of wondrous stuff for our self-esteem because they like lick us unconditionally and where'd that come from like just 20,000 years and you've like hijacked this ancient neuroendocrinology about like parental behavior and now it's got to do with this weird symbiotic thing we and wolves worked out somewhere back when what does it have any uh, effect on friendship like uh like human beings staring at each other did that does has anybody ever tested that i would assume people have looked at that it for example it strengthens monogamous bonds and there's a literature by now looking at oxytocin has its effects by binding to an oxytocin receptor right. there's a gene for the oxytocin receptor it comes in a number of variants and if you have one particular variant that's associated with oxytocin having less effective of an oomph in your nervous system that's associated with less stable relationships ah. So, you know, none of this stuff is deterministic. Your, your, your sex life and your romantic life is not being determined by this one gene, like nothing remotely resembling that. But that's just part of the mix in there. I was just wondering if that mix applies to, like, platonic friendships, like male bonding and stuff. I wonder if there's, like, when guys are out having a good time, if they're also getting a good juice of oxytocin. My guess is when you have your, your basic, like, pathetic male sociality, which is, like, <laughs> you, like, talk about sports for five minutes with some guy, and as a result, you're willing to give up your life for him because, like, you know, this is male, male bonding. I bet that's got something to do with oxytocin. <laughs>